This is the Australian National University Library. And this video is about how to use scholarly sources in your research. One of the first things students are told by their lecturers is to ensure they use scholarly sources in their assignments. They stress this constantly, so it must be important, right? But what makes an information source scholarly? Well, for starters, what they are doing here is ensuring that you do not use popular sources as the basis for your research. You are probably more familiar with popular information sources like magazines and newspapers. These are popular because they can be readily understood and consumed by just about anyone. By popular, think The Australian, The New York Times, Vogue, Women's Weekly. But it also includes publications like National Geographic, Popular Psychology, and New Scientist. Scholarly sources are different. They are typically found only in specialized publications such as academic journals and books. And generally, you access these through libraries and online databases. So how do you work out what is scholarly and what is popular so you're citing the right kinds of sources in your research? First up, look at who wrote it. This is pretty important. If it is scholarly, it is typically going to be written by researchers and academics, people like your lecturers, who are affiliated with a university or a reputable research institution. If it is popular, it is usually written by journalists or commentators who may or may not be specialists in the topic they're writing on. They also have very different purposes and intended audiences. This changes how they frame the writing. Scholarly sources present original research to other researchers and academics, so this work often contains a lot of highly specialized technical language and a specialized vocabulary that you just don't see in popular sources which use everyday accessible language to inform, entertain, or persuade the general public. Another definite giveaway is references. Popular sources typically do not have reference lists, or they have very minimal ones. Scholarly sources, on the other hand, always include an extensive reference list. So if this is missing, you are probably looking at a popular source. This lack of a reference list, which is critical for linking the information presented in the article to related research, makes popular sources much more difficult to fact check and trace the origins of the information, which is probably why lecturers tell us to use scholarly sources in the first place. So, even if the article is in a well-respected magazine like New Scientist, instead of citing it, go to the library databases and look up the original research that the article is referring to. While a reference list is not a guarantee that research is scholarly, it can be a solid indicator. But always review any reference list for anomalies, like this article, Immediate Treatment for Early Stage SARS-CoV-2 Infections. It has an extensive citation list. But on closer inspection, if you go to the actual sources it is citing, they do not back up what the article is claiming they say. In this case, the reference list is being used to trick the reader into thinking it is a legitimate scholarly article. Spoiler alert, it is not. Now, full disclosure, determining if a source is popular or scholarly is not always straightforward, and there may be instances where an information source has some features of both a scholarly and a popular source. Asking the following questions can help you decide for yourself if what you are citing in your research is indeed scholarly. Is the author qualified in the field they're writing about? Who is the intended audience? Is the language academic and unbiased? Is there an extensive reference list? Do the references actually verify the content of the article? If you are still in doubt, it is always best practice to check with your lecturer or supervisor. And don't forget, the ANU Library is here to help you navigate the sometimes confusing world of scholarly information sources. We have an amazing online collection and loads of guides available to support you. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you never miss a video. Having trouble or need some specific assistance? If in doubt, reach out. You can always contact the ANU Library for support. We are here to help.